Welcome to Hoko Palitzo's Poetry Moment featuring Blake by Lucille Clifton. I'm Sarah Luckadoo. In her collection called The Terrible Stories, Lucille Clifton wrote poems about racist violence, biblical lust, despair, and her own cancer. But in the middle of the book, Clifton's poem Blake is a plume of hope. With lines calling for grace and saviors, this poem was one that Clifton usually didn't read to audiences. In fact, Hoko Polizzo has the only video of her reading this piece. Clifton is a Lilly Poetry Prize winner and was Hoko Polizzo's artistic advisor for decades. This poem, she said, came to her after she had been living in the South for a while remembering and living with its history of slavery and Jim Crow. She was being driven to her home in Columbia, Maryland, watching out the car windows at the trees flashing by and remembering William Blake and his visions. Blake was a 19th century poet and artist who wrote that when he was nine, he saw angels in the trees. In fact, Blake said he had visions almost daily and angels figured heavily in those mystical experiences. He often painted angels, especially in his illustrated book, Songs of Innocence and of Experience. Celestial beings fluttered through his poems, guarding him, surveying the world, watching over children. The world has made famous his line, cherish pity, lest you drive an angel from your door. While Clifton didn't often write about angels or visions directly, she always had her eyes open. In the same collection, Clifton writes about the female fox that often sat by her window, how they watched each other through the glass and acknowledged each other's power. Her fox poem reads, Child, I tell you now, it was not the animal blood I was hiding from. It was the poet in her the poet and the terrible stories she could tell. Blake is not an inspirational poem to be put on a flowery background and posted to Instagram. There are terrible stories in it. Shown by the leaden way Clifton writes the face of what we have become and this hunger entering our loneliness. But she ends the poem by coming home, back north and searching the branches for poems. Clifton's short lines and direct language could evoke whole other worlds. And her words both challenged and inspired readers. Clifton's line from Blake about the flutter that can save us lingers with the reader. We should watch the trees waiting for poems or for angels. Perhaps they are similar things. And now, Blake by Lucille Clifton. Blake saw them glittering in the trees, their quills erect among the leaves, angels everywhere. We need new words for what this is, this hunger entering our loneliness like birds, stunning our eyes into rays of hope, we need the flutter that can save us, something that will swirl across the face of what we have become and bring us grace. Back north, I sit again in my own home, dreaming of Blake, searching the branches for just one poem. Yeah. Yeah.